Salam everyone, my name is Masood and welcome to Piaz Mias. We're making a special dish today called Orme Sabzi Dai style with meatballs. I first want to thank Fahang Foundation for creating this amazing program where we are able to celebrate our rich culture through different forms of art. Today we're doing culinary arts and making this special dish, Orme Sabzi, which by the way is probably one of the most loved dishes in Iran, outside of Iran, and many non-Iranians. Um, let's get started. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit of backstory behind uh, the recipe and why it's so important to me. Uh, my grandma had to come up with this recipe which stuck uh, to our family, uh, stayed with our family, because my late uncle disliked stew meat. And for that reason, she came up with a creative way so he could enjoy one of his favorite dishes. And uh, that's what cooking is all about, is uh, changing things, ingredients, uh, you know, to make a recipe your recipe so you can enjoy it better. So there's no one way of making it. Um, that's it. Let's, I'm super excited to be doing this. Let's get started. These are the ingredients. Let's go through them. All right, let's go over the ingredients, which I've listed below. We have uh, the most important ingredients, a uh, number of ingredients that are combined here are freshly chopped herbs, parsley, cilantro, uh, green onions, and then we have our red kidney beans, which I use canned, it works perfectly. We have finely chopped yellow onions here. Limo amoni, which is dried uh, lime, which will be poking holes. Um, for right before we put it in the stew. We have the most important ingredient for this dish uh, that's unique. We have our mini meatballs, which is about an inch and a half in diameter. And it's, uh, cons it consists of 60% beef, 40% lamb. And also we have salt, pepper, uh, and a little bit of turmeric in there. And also garlic. So here we have my secret weapon, which is a pureed spinach. Um, this goes really well with Gorma Sabzi, brings out all the colors and the flavor of other herbs. Um, we have uh, fenugreek, which is Shambhalile in Farsi. We don't use a whole lot in my family, but some people like to add more. And for final touches, Limu fresh lime, uh, which I like to add. And uh, turmeric goes in everything, basically Persian cuisine, um, canola oil, and then also salt. Let's get started. Okay, I've heated up a medium pot or qablame as Persians say, and I'm pouring generous amounts of canola oil to cover the base of my pot. Then I'm going to put all my chopped herbs into the pot and stir once. So if you hear the sound of sizzling, or as Persians say, jilis vilis, then you have the right temperature. If not, then you just want you might want to uh, turn up the heat a little bit. I usually mix up the herbs once to just allow the, the oil to coat most of the herbs and just then let it sit. So now we need another medium pot heated with canola oil and this time for our pias, onion and our meats. I make sure to periodically check back on my herbs and give it a good mix to make sure everything is evenly seared. Okay back to the meat pot. I'm going to add my onions and casually monitor it until I achieve a semi-caramelized and golden color result. Okay, our piaz looks good and ready and let's add our gush ghelghali or meatballs. Um, by the way, I love it when fat from the meat and the flavors from the piaz combine. It's just a magical combo. Again, periodically checking back on our sabzi. Um, I find sometimes adding a little bit more oil helps with the searing process and brings out the flavors even more. Remember, we want the herbs to be seared to a dark green color. Now I'm going to add a pinch of our fenugreek or shambhalile to the mix. Balls are still a little fragile at this point as they form and cook. So instead of a spoon and spatula for mixing, I just pick up the pot and give it a little shake and toss to turn the meatballs. I only want the outer layers of the meatballs to be cooked just to avoid further dehydration and to avoid having dry meatballs. Now I'm going to add two cups of hot water and let it simmer for a couple minutes until I get my herbs ready for our final stage. Now I'm going to add the pureed spinach and give it a mix and bring up the temperature. 
So it looks like we have the right dark green color and our herbs are seared well, but of course not too much that they're dry and burnt. change the place of these two pots so I can give you a better view of the final mixture on the middle burner. See your dark color herbs are ready and ready for a hot water swim. <laughs> Let's add two cups of hot water to the pot on a medium to high heat and let it simmer for a couple minutes. It's time to marry the two pots and get them into one. They've been simmering for a couple of minutes now. Let's add this beautifully green pot of herbs into our meat pot and mix them together. Oh my God, check this beauty out. <laughs> Look at these colors. I wish you could be here to smell this already. Before I let this sit and settle for a while, let's taste it and add the right amounts of salt to make sure the flavors come out. Pinches of salt and now let's put the lid on and let it sit for 20 to 25 minutes. Of course I'm going to make some Persian rice on the side. <laughs> Taste the hormisabji again and make sure there's enough salt. I'm going to add our limu amoni into the mixture and close the lid. So I've drained my rice, placed some pita bread on the bottom of the pot for a tadig, and I'm now going to add the rice and cover it up with a lid and a kitchen towel. About 15 minutes since I put in the dried limes or limu amoni, I'm going to add our red kidney beans to our gourmet sabzi. Let's keep 5 to 10 of them just for plating, which I'll show you a bit later. Fully mix the delicate mixture and then again let it sit for 15 20 minutes before we plate and serve it. Yeah, with gourmet sabzi, you can never go wrong with letting it sit for longer so the flavors become richer and the aromas. Um, so if you have time, let it sit for maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes longer. Let's check this beauty out before we start plating it and serving it. Here's a closer look at what the stew should look like. Oh my god, the look and the meatballs and the aroma. Mmm. Okay guys, and the most exciting part is the final part where we get to eat Qorma Sabzi. I made some uh, Persian rice here with saffron on top and then we're gonna plate our Qorma Sabzi um, slowly here. Let me see if I can show you. I'm not sure if you can see in the pot, but I'll transfer it to our plate. Uh, it's been really fun making this uh, video. Uh, this, this dish does take a lot of patience uh, when you're making it. The longer it sits, um, the better the dish becomes. Uh, so you wanna let it sit. Uh, us Persians say uh, we need to uh, let it settle, job yofte. And when it does, it's, it's just a different dish. It's, um, the flavors are different. Uh, everything really comes together all the flavors. All right, so what you wanna do with this dish when you're plating it, it is a bit more difficult to plate and have this visually super appealing. Uh, take your time, you wanna make sure there's enough, enough. there's a good balance of juices and the herbs, and also, uh, most importantly, for contrast, um, definitely do beans. If you remember, uh, I saved some red kidney beans for the final part because that's how we kind of put a couple of uh, red beans on top to create 
that contrast. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna add another meatball here. Perfect. Um, and what you do is basically grab a couple of these kid beans, kidney beans, and uh, put them on top. I mean, these are already cooked, so you don't really have to worry about uh, them not being cooked. There you go. There you have it, guys. Orma Sabzi, Dai style with meatballs. All right, guys, and this is the most fun part of this video where we see the final result. Orma Sabzi, Dai style with meatballs. Uh, and then I've made some Persian rice with saffron on the side. It's been such a fun experience making this dish. Make sure to take your time. If you do make this dish, uh, share with me uh, if you like this recipe, just like we do in our family. Um, I wanna thank Fahang Foundation again for this amazing opportunity. Uh, I hope I get to do it again. And uh, I invite you to join me on my journey where I explore Persian cuisine, traditional Persian cuisine modern Persian cuisine and um, showcase it to the world, uh, to us Iranians and non-Iranians. And uh, yeah, at Piaz Miaz, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all social media outlets. And uh, yeah, love to see you there. Thank you very much for your support. If you do make this dish, please um, post your videos, post your photos and tag me. Uh, love to see it. Take care and see you soon. Piaz out.